Marion Hayden here. Today, I thought that we might check out how to walk a bass line on multiple bars. So in other words, a lot of times, one of the most challenging things that bass players have to do is to walk one chord or two chords on eight, 16, or even longer numbers of bars. What tends to happen is that we run out of ideas, we get musically bored, and then uh, or per we perhaps become overly repetitive in our bass lines. So let's look at some approaches that we can use to expand our bass lines, to make them sound better, to give us some more options of things to play. For our example, we're going to use So What. So What is a 32-bar walking bass form written by Miles Davis. It has two chords, D minor 7 and E flat minor 7. The form of the song is 16 bars of D minor 7, 8 bars of E flat minor 7, and then another 8 bars of D minor 7. So you can see this is a really good workout on two chords. So let's unpack some ways that we can open up this form and make our bass lines more interesting. First, let's make sure that we know the scales that go with each of those chords. The scales for the D minor 7 and the scales for the E flat minor 7. First, D minor 7. Then let's do the same thing for E flat minor. Here's the scale for E flat minor 7. So those are our basic scales. Note that I put some rhythms on there so that they will sound a little bit more like a walking bass line. So now what we're going to do is unpack these scales a little bit more and start giving us, giving ourselves more choices on the scales. So let's do the scale first in thirds. Let's do each of those scales. So we'll, first we'll start with D minor 7 in thirds. Try the same thing with the E flat minor 7 in thirds. So now we've done both of the scales in thirds. Let's unpack a little more. Let's do both of the scales in fourths. So this time we're gonna do D minor seven and fourths. Let's try an E flat now. So now we have force for E flat and D, E flat minor seven and D minor seven. Let's try fifths. Fits are even a bigger, bigger interval. They even will sound bigger to us. And let's try E flat. Now let's try chromatics. There's only one chromatic scale, but We'll try, we'll start it on D and then we'll start it on E flat. Here's the D. Then let's 
started on E flat. Now, let's try something really different. Let's try arpeggios. We'll just, we'll just do one arpeggio in D minor seven and one in E flat minor seven. Here's D minor seven. One, three, five, seven. Let's try the same thing in E flat minor seven. Now we have arpeggios. Then let's try one more really different thing. Let's try to put some repeated phrases on our bass lines. So this time what we'll do is basically just take a scale, but we'll, re we'll repeat some of the phrases so that it sounds almost like a song. So this should be a light bulb moment for a lot of people because when usually when you say repeated phrases, we really think about solos. But if you think about your bass lines like they were solos and like they were basically your own compositions, then you will put a lot more time and thought into what it is that you play on them. So, because these really are your compositions on a song. So let's try a couple repeated phrases in our bass lines. We'll do the same thing in E flat. So now we have a whole cadre of things, just an arsenal of things that we can use to really, to really express ourselves in our bass lines. We can use the scale, we have the scale with rhythms, we can add thirds, we can add fourths, we can do it in fifths, we can definitely use chromatics because that's always a part of everything, we can use arpeggios, and we can use repeated phrases. So those are, those are so many things that we can do to really bring a lot of personality and richness to our bass lines so that they really become our own compositions. So now, since we're talking about so what, I'm going to play a chorus of so what. I'm going to play the whole chorus, 32 bars, and I'm going to try to incorporate some of the things that we talked about. Talk, try to incorporate thirds, fourths, maybe some arpeggios, definitely some chromatics, and some repeated phrases, and to see if I can come up with a line that uh, really speaks on this song. So here we go. Hopefully you heard all those different connectors, the chromatic connectors, thirds, fourths, and different arpeggios. That's how you keep your bass line interesting and that's how your bass lines become your compositions. Thanks for checking in.